The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was an elderly man who was quite ill, and as he was ill, he said to his wife, he said, you know, Sarah, you've always been with me, through good and through bad. Like the time I lost my job, you were right there by my side. And when the war came and I enlisted, you became a nurse so that you could be right by my side. Then I was wounded, and you were there, Sarah, right by my side. Then the depression hit, and we had nothing, but you were there with me. And now here I am, sick as a dog, and always, you're right beside me. You know something, Sarah? I think you're bad luck. You know, always we are looking for somebody else to blame when it comes to the things of life, the trials and the tribulations and those types of things. We want that scapegoat. We want to put it on somebody else. It some, somehow makes us feel better. It's the same thing that Job did in that first reading. You know, Job, he had it rough. He had it really rough. I mean, he started out good. You know, he was very good, prosperous, all these good things. And then life started to happen. There were hostile tribes that destroyed his cattle, his sheep, his camels, and even his workers. And you go, oh, that's tough. Then a violent storm came and knocked over the house where his children were at and killed them. That's bad. And then his health deteriorated and he got sores all over his body. And you look at that and you go, That guy had it rough. And that's why in our first reading you hear him say, I shall never see happiness again. Well, it kind of makes sense. If you've had that kind of a day, uh, that's going to be a tough one. Who does Job blame? God. Naturally. It's easy to scapegoat our suffering, our pain on God, since we know that God can do anything, but chooses to let us make our own decisions. And that's a tough thing, you know, because, again, we want to, and I hear people say this all the time, I don't know why God's doing this to me. You know, I did it earlier this week. Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow and said, there's going to be six more weeks of winter. And as I think about poor Father Joseph coming home today, I have to go pick him up today, uh, he is coming back from 87-degree India and literally will freeze to death this week. And I found myself saying, God, why are you doing this to the poor guy? Why are you doing this to us? Couldn't, couldn't Punxsutawney Phil have, you know, kind of foregone seeing the shadow and we just get to spring a little quicker? I shall not see happiness again for six more weeks. Why are you doing this to us, God? As if God's up there going, I'm going to kill your Indian associate by, by cold. He's not doing that, Right? watched a documentary on Netflix a while ago about healthy eating and how we are getting cancer and diabetes because we're eating meat, eggs, and dairy products like cheese, which are all of my favorite things. Their answer was this, eat a plant-based diet. Well, That's ridiculous, okay? A plant-based diet. My response to that is the same as Job. If all I can eat is a plant-based diet, I shall not see happiness again. That's my response. But then it's like, God, why couldn't you just make me naturally skinny and give me metabolism like all these other people? As if God was up there going, you're not going to have metabolism. Yesterday I had the funeral of a a 26-year-old, one of my former students from Cardinal Stritch. She died of a drug overdose and has struggled with a lot of demons throughout her life. And as I was talking to her dad and to her mom, again, there could have been that sense of saying, I don't know why God did this to her, but there wasn't. There was a sense of understanding that now she is at peace and there was a faith in them that was really, really beautiful. And there was a sense that now we can do something to help a lot of other people. 
We all go through Job moments in our life. I think this whole pandemic has been one of these Job moments. A lot of people are just like, I'm just tired of this. Why is God doing this? Again, we tend to, we tend to blame, blame God. But this whole sense, this whole sense of going through Job moments in our life, the reality is that we are guaranteed to suffer and we will go through pain in this life. And it does no good to blame God, who most certainly is not up there asking for tragedy to happen in our life. Frankly, it all stems back to original sin. It all goes back to Adam and Eve, who again, we're told, don't do this because I know what's good for you. And they do it anyway because they want to be like God. They want to be in control. They want to do what they want to do. And from there, everything has gone to you know where in a handbasket. Because again, we bring on all of these various things in our life. And I know there's always the question of, you know, why, does, why do good things happen to bad people? Why does God allow evil to happen? If God is God, can't he get rid of it all? Of course. Why does he choose not to? Somebody said this, gave this explanation. They said, well... Have you ever done anything evil or bad or sinful in your life? And the answer is, well, yeah. Well, then, if God's getting rid of evil and sin and all those things, then does he start with you, getting rid of you? I mean, if God got rid of all evil on this earth, he'd have to get rid of every single one of us because we all have those sinful inclinations because of original sin. Instead, God takes another approach. He takes another approach rather than just getting rid of it all. I saw this on Facebook the other day. It said, God didn't remove the Red Sea. He parted it for the Israelites. Sometimes God doesn't remove your problems. He makes a way through them. And that, to me, made so much sense. We just want God to pluck out our problems and get rid of them. But instead, he creates a way through those problems for you and I. When bad things happen to good people, when we're in the midst of suffering, our gospel sheds a lot of light on what we can do in order to get through that and to see how God's working in the midst of it. Number one is this. Jesus does heal in order to give hope in the midst of suffering. We've seen that and heard that in the gospel this week, last week, a lot of healing going on, physical and spiritual. And when we're suffering in those ways, whether it is physically or spiritually, with whatever demons might be happening within us, God does heal. And I see it all the time, both physically and spiritually. We just frankly have to trust in it. Two, Jesus suffered himself, and so he remains close to us. How awesome it is that we have a God who chose to come onto this earth to live like us and to understand suffering. And so when we're going through those suffering moments, those Job moments of our life, we have a God who gets it and understands it and is right there with us in the midst of it. Number three, he sends people into our lives to accompany us on our suffering. We see the disciples today bringing all of these people, accompanying them to Jesus to be cured. You know, remember that story, that wonderful story about the, the, the paralytic who, again, his friends bring him and lift him up onto the roof and lift him through the roof down to Jesus. God gives us people in our life in order to accompany us and to give us hope and suffering. Yesterday at that funeral, there were so many people there and it gave so much hope and comfort to the mom and the dad of this 26-year-old girl. I could just see it on their face to see all these various people coming in. And so we hope that people will accompany us when we're suffering, and then hopefully we'll accompany them on their suffering. Maybe it's a simple phone call, but boy, it makes a big difference. And what I've started to find in my own life is that when somebody pops into my mind, you know, maybe it's somebody who's lost someone or whatever the case might be, and they pop into my mind. That is the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you need to accompany them. Do something. Call. 
write, you know, email. Just go up to him after church. And four, he promises that we will see happiness again. In the midst of all those Job moments, our Lord promises that we will see happiness again, certainly in eternity. Obviously, we want to get to that point where there's no more pain, suffering, tears, nothing. Right? But also, he promises happiness too in this life, even now. There's a great passage from St. Paul. It's one of my favorites to the Romans. All things work for good for those who love the Lord. All things work for good for those who love the Lord. That doesn't mean that there won't be suffering or pain or challenge or struggle. But all things work for good for those who love the Lord. So when we're having those Job moments, whether that Job, Job moment happened to you uh, a year ago or 10 years ago or you're in the midst of it or it's coming up, let us never forget that all things work for good for those who love the Lord.